Collinwood before the turn of the century, a time of evil and terror for all who lived in the great house. The unexpected return of Laura Collins has caused one person in the house, Quentin, to live in mortal fear. He and he alone is aware of the mysterious link that exists between Laura and the supernatural. And now, on this night, he believes he has found the way to end Laura's existence. No, this is not a worthless piece of junk. <laughs> it's a very valuable and precious thing we have here. For it contains a flame. <laughs> and not just an ordinary flame. Oh, no, no, no. This flame is capable of giving life. But if it were to be snuffed out, a life would be snuffed out with it. <laughs> How will it happen, I wonder? Huh? <laughs> just like that? Or will the energy just slowly be drained out of her? Well, we'll soon know, won't we? <laughs> Goodbye, Laura. Stand up, sit down, sit down. I'm so cold, I don't understand it. Sorry. I better call a doctor right away. No, no, I don't want a doctor. But Laura, you're ill. You have to have medical attention. All right. First, I'd, I'd really like something hot. Some tea? Oh, I have best fix you something. Don't move. Stay where you are. Just a minute. Quentin, did you see Laura just now? See Laura? Where? Outside. She just went out of the house. I haven't seen her since early this evening. Well, then I'd like you to go out and look for her, please, and bring her right down. Why? Has she done something naughty? Quentin, this is no time to be flippant. She's very ill. Are you sure she isn't just being a little melodramatic? What's the matter with you, anyway? I told you she was ill. And she could hardly stand on her feet a few minutes ago. Then how did she manage to get outside? I don't know. But I wouldn't worry about her. She's always known how to take care of herself very well. How can you be so callous? Judith, when I saw her earlier, there was nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with her. Oh, she was a little fatigued after the ordeal at the school, but that's all. She underwent a severe shock at the school. She and Nora were both trapped in flames. Maybe her ailment is only emotional. Emotional? <laughs> My, our Laura, struck down by feelings of emotion. Now, come now, Judith. You said yourself that she isn't capable of feeling anything. Are you going out to look for her, or aren't you? No. Now, uh, may I ask what has come over you? 
What are you talking about? Oh, this sudden tender concern for your dear sister-in-law. You've always hated her. You were never happier than when she was out of this house. My feelings haven't changed, but yeah. I've never wished her any harm, Quentin. Whatever her faults are, she's a human being. <laughs> That's debatable. Oh, I'm sorry. Have I shocked you? She did something tonight that you wouldn't do. Mm, and what was that? She went into a burning schoolroom, risked her life to save her child. Under the same circumstances, you'd run the other way, coward that you are. Judith, you're not going to shame me into going out to look for her, so don't even try. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a drink. I uh, don't suppose you'd like to join me. It's too late for a doctor, Judith. What she needs is an undertaker. you? Who is it? Dirk Wilkins. I was going back to the house and I saw you coming out. You looked as if you might be ill. Come here, Dirk. What is it? What's wrong? Please hurry. Hey, you are ill. You're trembling all over. Mrs. Collins, please. Please stay where you are. Just stand here. Oh, oh I'm so cold. I'm so terribly cold. Mrs. Collins, you've got to let me take you back to Collinwood. No. We must stay here just for a few more minutes. But we can't. Now, look, somebody might come and see us. No one will. Don't be embarrassed, Dirk. Look, I'm sorry, but I can't help it. You don't know it yet. It was very lucky for you that you came here tonight when you did. Yes, yes, well, uh, we'll talk about it on the way back to Collinwood, okay? Because you're going to be the one. Yes, it will be through you. Mrs. Collins, I don't know what you're talking about, okay? You will help me. Help you? You will come to me when I summon you. Listen, no, we can't stay here. You will know how much I need you and you will come to me. Mrs. Collins, I'm sorry now, but I think I'd better take you back to Collinwood now. Come on. Yes, I can imagine how terrifying it must have been. But thank the Lord that all the children were safe. Yes, of course, Mrs. Trask, I'll, I'll tell him the moment he comes home. Goodbye. I take it the school was beyond repair. The building was completely gutted. Huh. Do they have any idea how the fire started? None. <clears throat> but don't you think you ought to try the doctor again? He should be back from his house call by now. I have never known any one human so indifferent to suffering. The suffering of some people has to be seen to be believed. She's very sick. Yes, I know. Thank you for bringing her back. Good heavens, Judith. I had no idea you were so right. Now, don't you worry, Laura. Judith has a call into a doctor. Everything's going to be all right. You hypocrite. Is this any time for name calling? Get away from her and let if me take her upstairs. If you please. In view of my earlier reaction, I do think I owe it to her to take her upstairs myself. Come on, Laura, I'll help you. Come inside, Duke. Yes, Miss Collins. Where did you find her? She was walking around in the garden. Uh, she looked like she was going to collapse. When I first saw her, I, I have to admit she looked like she'd been drinking. You know I better than to think that. When I got closer, I knew it was true. She's very sick. Oh, in the garden. What was she doing there? Miss Collins, if you don't mind my opinion, I don't even think she knows. What do you mean? I think she's delirious. I think that because 
I don't think she knew where she was going. And nothing she said made any sense at all. Well, I'm glad you found her. Thank you for bringing her back, dear. Laura. The doctor will be here to take care of you very soon. How do you feel now? Are you too weak to talk? I'd like you to tell me what's happened to you. Please. You already know. I beg your pardon? You're too concerned, Quentin. Much too concerned. Of course. We, uh, we wouldn't want anything to happen to you now, would we? I don't know how it was possible. But you did this to me. It couldn't have been anyone else. Laura, I don't know what you're talking about. You're trying to kill me. Oh. Now, that is a very strong accusation. <laughs> Tell me. Do you have any way of proving that? I'll find a way. I'll make you pay for this, Quentin. I doubt it. No. I don't think you have that much time left. Get out of here! Get out! No, no. We mustn't exert ourselves, my dear. You don't have any energy to spare, do you? Oh, <laughs> now don't look at me that way. It almost compels me to feel sorry for you. I wouldn't want your pity. And you wouldn't get it. And for rather a good reason. I recall an incident at the cottage the other evening. We both thought that I was dying. I asked you to help me, and you refused. You left me there to die. Now, I do believe that one bad turn does deserve another. Her ice cold. Goodbye, Laura. I was about to make my rounds. I just wondered... Oh, I've no head instructions. You can go ahead on your rounds. Well, uh, did the doctor come to see Mrs. Collins? Yes. She's going to be all right, then? He doesn't know. Well, I don't understand. Neither do I. He examined her, and he doesn't know what's the matter with her. You better get started. It's almost 8 o'clock. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Warmth and fire. Help me. I cannot die now. I've not, I've not finished what I came here to do. Oh, I, I 
beg for your understanding and mercy. Please, grant me another life-giving flame. Hear me, Master, hear me. No! No, please! Please don't take away your warmth. There's so little left. Please help me. I beg you, appear to me. Appear to me in human form. I've chosen someone. A young man. Through him, you can appear to me and help me. I beg you, possess him and answer my plea. now, spellbound by your flames. Take possession of him and come to me. Please come to me. Come to me. Please come to me. to ah amen ra and au atu come to me come to me I don't want to die. I can't die. Not now. Not here. Me, please. I'm saying things. Foreign words. D don't make any sense. Please come closer to me. Laura. I shouldn't be here. Do you want to leave? No. No. No, I want to stay. I want to help you. I don't know why. Because I'm going to die. No. No, you, you can't die. You won't. You have the power to save me. No, I... I don't know what you're talking about. I, Look, I haven't got any power. Look deep in your soul. You will know. You must do something. There's very little time. I don't know what to do. Look deep into your soul. You will know. You see? 
You do have the power. Only you can restore me. No. No, it isn't possible. I... It is possible. Look deep inside yourself and you will see the flame of eternal life. You do want to help me, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes. I'm never going to let you go. I don't want to lose you. Use your power. Yes. Use it. Don't let me die. Please don't let me die. Oh, my God. 